Once again, our top story, another bombing, this time of a local transit bus. As authorities scramble to respond to this latest incident, we've learned that law enforcement is following leads to a possible domestic terror group. Police are looking for a man seen getting off of the bus moments before the explosion. The man is described as a Caucasian of average build, approximately six feet tall, and 175 pounds. The man was wearing a denim jacket. News 6 has learned that authorities have already received claims of responsibility by known domestic terror groups, but officials had no comment at this time, saying only that the FBI is following up on all leads and is coordinating with local law enforcement. News 6 reporter Lisa Vasquez spoke with Special Agent Jacobs, who is leading the investigation. What can you tell us about the investigation? There's a great deal of physical evidence, and we're following up on all leads. Do you see any similarities between the earlier bombing and this one? Not at this time. Do you think what that both of the bombings could be the work of a single person? We can't say at this time. But what about the bombers' letters to the newspapers? What can you tell us this about that? This is an ongoing investigation, and we're following up on all available resources to bring to justice those who are responsible. That's all I can say for now. Thank you. Just one more question. You will you be giving us additional information Davis? later? I've got a couple of witnesses mm -hmm. saying that only one guy got off the bus at this stop. Walking with his head down, headed back in the direction the bus came from. Oh, okay, so south, southeast? Right. Okay, let's go through all the closed circuit TV potential. There's a lot of businesses in this area. Maybe one of them got something on video. They're checking. Good. What about forensics? As a business owner, you already know that CCTV closed circuit television can help deter or solve a crime on your premises. You're about to see that they can do even more. Your CCTV system might even help solve a terrorist attack. That is, if it's up to the task. Basic setup and maintenance problems reduce the performance of many systems. So what about yours? Do your cameras provide enough resolution for facial recognition? Are they positioned for a clear view of the subject? Is the lighting adequate to capture clear images both day and night? Is your recorder set up for the best image detail? Are you maintaining and managing your system so that it can do its job when it's really needed? We're going to show you how to get the most from your CCTV system, and that starts with capturing recognition quality images with the detail law enforcement needs to identify the people and events captured by your cameras. What do we have? You want the good news or the bad news? There's good news? We canvassed a pharmacy, and they mentioned that someone came in and bought four gallons of flammable liquid. The cashier thought it was a little weird and also said the guy paid in cash. Please tell me there was a camera on his face. I'll get to that. We uh, have another lead. A female who works the cheap motels on Route 60 said that she was uh, waiting on someone and saw a guy matching the description, wearing a denim jacket, also said he had a tattoo on his neck. Said he came in, paid for five nights in cash, said he didn't have any ID or credit cards, and put another hundred on the counter. Did we get him on camera? No, the uh, system wasn't running. And uh, as for the pharmacy... What? Well, we're getting to the bad news part. What, was the camera off? Did they run out of tape? What? No, we got him at the pharmacy. So how was that bad? It might be easier if we just show you. Uh... That's the pharmacy? Yeah. See, the sun's just so bright on the doorway. Yeah, I see. No, I don't see. Wait, where did he go? Their camera's using a low frame rate. It saves on drive space and gives you better image quality, but the problem is you might not get any image at all. Now you see him, now you don't. Exactly. Here he is, walking down the aisleway and picking out a couple of backpacks. Now, ERT found pieces of backpacks at both scenes, consistent with the type sold at this store. This is useless. Got a really good shot of that sign. Which does what? Which does nothing. Uh, here he is at the cash register, and that is what we call a focus problem. Probably haven't checked the thing in weeks. Can you enhance it? I'm not a wizard, and we're not on TV, so no. I can enlarge it for you, but without the details. So what we're seeing is, we would have had him, except for the sun on the door, the display blocking the view, the other camera set up, 
have someone tell me, is it so hard to get these things set up and useful? I mean, it's not that hard, but merchants aren't thinking about what we might need in law enforcement. They just figure, hey, I've got a camera, I'm covered. They're not thinking about image quality. Yeah, we see this kind of thing every day. What kind of thing? English, please. Small words. <laughs> I'll show you. Now, to start with, what most people call taking a picture, we like to call capturing an image, or better yet, capturing video data. The better the quality of the data, the better the quality of the image. The more you can see, and the more you can do with it. Okay so far? Makes sense. Now, there's all kinds of equipment for capturing images. Setting up the best CCTV requires figuring out the best hardware for business owners' needs. Now, some hardware is just no good for that no matter what. This is a webcam. Check this out. You can see, blurry, out of focus, okay for internet. Totally awful if you need quality video. There's just not enough detail. We've got a capture, but it's not what we call recognition quality. The resolution is too low. We got analog, digital, black and white, color. Now all these cameras use chips, and generally speaking, the bigger the chip, the better the picture quality. You get better detail, more control of contrast, like between very bright and very dim areas. Like in the pharmacy. Exactly. Hey, Andrews, do you mind walking over to the mannequin for me? I'm gonna bring back our friend, the webcam. Check this out. Look familiar? Okay. Now, watch this. This is a good camera. Higher resolution, plenty of dynamic range. See? A camera like this one has no trouble keeping up with shifting conditions. Far superior capture technology, higher resolution, better dynamic range. Here, look at them side by side. There's no comparison. Exactly. The minimum camera resolution should be 480 horizontal lines. But it's not just about resolution and range. That camera, the good one, also is a faster lens. Faster? Faster lens allows more light in. Has a larger maximum aperture opening, which lets more light into the focal plane of the camera. Now what this does is, it allows for brighter images in dimmer lighting. More light means more depth of field. Depth of field? The more depth of field you have, the more of the scene is in focus. You also have to consider focal length. Focal length? Right. Some cameras zoom in and out, whereas others have a fixed focal length. It all depends on what you need. Right. Say, for anything at a point of transaction, like a cash register or a toll booth, the subject's head should fill at least 15% of the total image in frame, giving you the detail that you need. So you'd like the back to school sign at 0%, right? Right. Lines of sight are always critical. You want to make sure there aren't any obstructions. Which is all part of having the right sight plan. Now here is a store blueprint. Now this is retail, so the key camera spots are at transaction points. Cash registers? Right, and entrances and exits. Do we need both? The more the better. You're gonna want cameras here, 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 and here. Now you'll have to throw in some extra coverage for restrooms and the aisles and other key points. Can you show coverage? Of course, hang on. Oh, good overlap. Right, you want multiple chances to capture a good image. Guy comes in here, boom, you got him. Guy goes to get a snack or something, boom, got him again. Guy comes over to check out, boom, exits the building, and boom. Also, camera height is very important. You want to make sure it's as close to eye level as possible. Otherwise, you might lose out to a baseball cap. And with a good sight plan, you can make sure that you don't have any blind spots. You can toy around with the camera positions, do a test recording and make sure that you're getting what you wanted. Another big thing here is lighting. I thought lens speed took care of light problems. It helps, but it isn't the whole ballgame. Then what kind of camera do we get? Oh no, I'm talking about actual lights. Here, take a look at this. See, the lighting is great in the morning, but by the afternoon, the sun is blowing out the whole frame. But look, you add an extra bank of lights to fill in during the afternoon to get more clarity. So you can balance bright light from one direction with light from another source. 
you're adding more light, but it's from another direction. It helps even things out. And sometimes if you have bright light through a big window, you have no choice but to tint the window or put up a shade. And if you're outside, say in the street or parking lot, you need to set up timers on your artificial lights. You'd rather them come in a little earlier than a little later. Take a look at this. This is a gas station we worked with. They were having break-ins at the rear of the building, and they had a good quality camera and lights on a timer, but they weren't keeping up with how much earlier it was getting dark. Chance to see the bad guy, and we miss it. So they adjust their timer. A few days later, the same guy tries it again, but this time, we got it. So I use higher resolution yep. and control for the right depth of feel and contrast. Mm -hmm. And then I put together a site plan with the correct camera coverage, positioning, frames per second, and lighting, and I'm more likely to get a recognition quality recording. You got it. Yeah. We're on our way. The home supply store has some video for us. We can pick it up. Hang on, there's a couple things you guys got to know before you can go. I'll call you when we're rolling. You can fill me in en route. You mean we just can't grab the tape and bring it back? Chances are there is no tape. Most systems nowadays are fully digital. So you're going to have to go over the recordings and make sure the video you want is there. <laughs> the guy said it was there. Yeah, but it could be over-recorded by now, so make sure. And you need to figure out how much footage you need to collect. Then make sure you collect the native file with the proprietary player. Okay, slow down. Speak English, please. The native file is just the original form of a file. With most digital systems, the specific attributes of the video files are proprietary to the program that created it. You're not speaking English yet. DVRs use compression to get more space out of their storage. Some compression throws away potential image detail. The native file format is usually the least compressed. Best image, but you need specific manufacturer software to play it. A lot of systems export what we like to call open file, like AVI. Problem is they're usually compressed even further, which means image quality is reduced. Hmm. I actually understood that. Good. So, give me both formats. Uh, one other thing, we're going to need to know the output options on the machine to retrieve the video. Output options? Yeah, it could be a DVD, CD burner, or USB port. Okay, I'm with you. If we run into anything weird, we'll give you a shout from the store. Otherwise, we'll call you when we're inbound. Okay.